Yeah, just uh, just looking at the. I think you're the only guy I know working in comics who has uh, a Hanna Barbera cartoon style as, a, if not a primary influence, at least one of one of those looks. Well, it's certainly um, a subconscious influence, and I'm rather loath to admit it. Although there are times um, it comes out, particularly in characters like the Pope. Uh, there, I mean. That nose is is right out of Hanna Barbera, um, as is the the mouth. You know, the connection of the nose and the mouth um, is pure Hanna Barbera, and that wasn't something I was conscious of. That was something I realized when I was into the drawings and oh my God, this is all Hanna Barbera. You know, <laughs> do you think that's your anima animation background? Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's you know. From, because Hanna Barbera is a touchstone style for it Saturday is a, morning. Yeah, it is a touchstone style, and I was you know watching television from I guess you know whatever 1962 to 1971, and that was dominated by Hanna Barbera. So it's not um, surprising that it would ingrain itself upon my subconscious and come out through my artwork decades later. It's not the only style in there. I mean, there's uh, Kirby, Ditko. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty free flowing, um, and and most of it is you know I consider my own. Uh, but the others, the other influences do come filtered through. I, I'm not overtly trying to ape anybody in particular, uh, unless it's um, blatant. In which case, I want you to know that I'm I'm aping somebody. And doing a beautiful job of it. Excellent. It's a nice looking book. It's a nice yeah. looking book. Yeah, I'm proud of it. So I was telling Chester when I was talking to you on the phone that you said you went down in the subway. Yes, I did. So you're reading, reading Ragnarok with the, with the, the cover. I did. Well, the, co the cover really jumps out at people. It's, so, it's good. And so as soon as I got my advanced copies from uh, uh, from the printer, you know, I opened it up and I realized what it was. You know, I immediately just got on the subway. I just rode back and forth reading the book. And, and people came in and off, you know, looking at it. What's that? Oh, that's interesting. That's, that's interesting. So I just thought I'd lodge things in their subconscious, just in case, you know, uh, you know, a review might come out in, in a newspaper, and they say, "Wait a second, that looks familiar." You know? I can't imagine how you'd have to hold the book to it. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, well, actually, I mean, the binding has improved. That's probably what they were looking at. Why is that guy holding that book so funny? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so that yeah. people can see the tongue. Well, one of the things that's improved in the last ten years is the binding. And you know, yeah, this is blue binding. Yeah, yeah, this binding is excellent. Uh, I can actually open the book and sit on the subway with it like this, and the pages don't pop out in my face. Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, please. This is Jeff, our waiter, by the way. <laughs> yeah, we've been uh, having trouble with the binding on the Louis Real paperback. Is it too tight? It's too tight, isn't it? Well, they've been coming off. Oh, really? Yeah. The have been coming off. Oh, when you open it. Yeah, okay, yeah, I know that. Uh, the binder that we used for um, the Cerebus trade paperbacks, we had that problem with uh, the first run of Cerebus and High Society. And then they just started gluing them twice, basically, put in two layers of glue. And. Uh, it had been such an irritating problem. I remember being down at Prenny where we got the first, here's our new glue system, and me just shaking the, the Jesus out of that book. It's like, all right, you sold me. Like, I've done everything I can to get those pages out. And I got tired of telling people, hold it carefully. Don't open it all the way. You remember when DC started publishing all those hard covers in the was it late 80s they started doing the hard covers? I remember in particular my Dark Knight Returns. I bought it, I took the shrink raft off, I opened it, and literally the pages just went. I could hear the binding, I could hear the glue crack, and the pages just fell out on my lap. Yeah, yeah. That was actually the first experiment with uh, the trade paperback. Uh, when Warren did Dracula, boy, now I'm dating myself. That goes back to, I probably don't even want to think, 
$5 trade paperback reprinting uh, Spanish material, Esteban Moroto mm -hmm. and those guys, color. Very attractive package, definitely had that wave of the future quality to it. Like, boy, someday they'll do lots of comics this way. But those pages came right out. Uh, I don't think I'd owned it a week. And that took, definitely took a lot of the bloom off of that rose. If you just have it sort of like carefully placed on, a, on your bookshelf and you don't want to take it down too often and read it. That's a little, little over the edge. Yeah. Well, I did a lot of scouting on um, on the books there, and I emailed um, Drawn and Quarterly a couple times and got some helpful comments from them. And I, I basically ended up going with the top shelf format um, in, in size and binding. Right. Because uh, you know, I like the books that they had, and I like the the six by nine size. This is actually six and a half by nine and a half. Uh, just a little bit smaller, just tightens up the artwork a little bit more. And, um, and it, it's, it's nice. It pulls nicely, like a book. One, one of the things I wanted to do too is, is notice it. I mean, in, in, the, in the design, I designed it like a book and not like a graphic novel. Uh, in, in terms of the front end and the, the table of contents and the, the bibliography at the back, read the forwards and the, and the introductions. You know, I wanted to have, have it look like a book and not uh, like a graphic novel necessarily, uh, which is why the, 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 uh, the type design in that uh, was kind of reflective of that. Did Steve Brissett mention me in his introduction? No, he didn't. <laughs> That's good. No, See, I was going to have to read it right now. Yes. Although I, I mentioned your, your imitations to him. Um, imitations? You imitate when you're doing Alan Moore and you're doing Bissette. And, uh, and Bissette's comment on that was, well, knowing Dave, it was probably verbatim. So. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Tape Recorder. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a good line. I, uh, that sticks with me longer than anything else. How did, how did that guy phrase that? That was really good.